everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Welcome to episode 123 of In Focus Friday. Now, if you've not caught last week's episode yet, where we focused on Silver Bean Counter Cool Beans Beans by MK Bars, then it's well worth a look. The link, as always, is down in the description below. Thank you to one and all for voting in last week's episode. As you can see, the Imperial Cameroonian Dragon was the winner, uh, which is surprising. I thought you'd all go for that very big giant gold coin. So the big five sovereign gold coin and that giant stack of piggies will be returning at the end of this episode with one new additional item, which I think you're all going to vote for, to be honest. So stick around and cast your vote at the end of this episode for what you'd like to see next time. But today it is all about this Cameroonian Imperial Dragon. Now, that doesn't mean that this is a dragon that is synonymous with Cameroonian culture and history. Of course not, no. It's just another example of uh, mints, this one in fact, the Scottsdale Mint, teaming up with or partnering with a different country, and in this case the Republic of Cameroon, which is of course an African country, uh, to create this coin. And uh, let's grab it out the council so that we can have a good old close look at it under the camera. And it's a, it's a pretty attractive coin, I have to say, and uh, it's called the Imperial Dragon. Now, I picked this up from goldsilver.be, our favourite Belgian bullion dealer, and I have a little bit of a habit, I suppose, now of doing such things when I see interesting coins. One thing that goldsilver.be does very well is they have a whole different range. They've got such a huge range of different coins, and they stock and supply things like this, manufactured by Scottsdale Mint, and you know it's quite easy to come by in the US at decent cheap prices. So for us here in the UK, it's not that easy to get hold of relatively limited release coins like this. In this particular instance, this one's got a mintage of 25,000. Uh, so for us, when things like this come up on goldsilver.be at pretty, pretty decent prices, this one was 18 euros per coin. I think it's a little bit less actually when I purchased it because it was back in like November when I purchased it, maybe it was about 17 euros per coin. So decent prices, still obviously a premium over the spot price and over cheaper bullion, but it's kind of pretty cool. It looks very nice indeed. So that's what I do. I buy a bunch of these interesting coins in ones or twos just so that I can see them, enjoy them, share them with you guys here on In Focus Friday or on other parts of my channel. I've got a very large stack of them at some point. I'll maybe do a kind of in Focus Friday stack video where I get all of the coins that I've featured out on there uh, on the video to share with you guys. But anyway, let's talk about the coin itself. Now, one thing obviously I want to talk about, and I sort of alluded to it a little bit, is it's a Cameroonian Imperial Dragon. So here is the crest of Cameroon, and I have to say, this is the first Cameroonian coin that I've seen in person, and I really do like this crest. It's a very attractive looking uh, rear of a coin, and you don't often see that. A lot of the time, a lot of energy and effort goes into uh, the creation of the design, and then on the back, it's just either the queen's head or whatever it might be, it's just a crest, or, you know, it's just not very exciting. But this one, it seems to be quite fun. You know, we've obviously got the crest there of the Republic of Cameroon. The lettering stands out really well on that kind of matte finish with the shiny proof finish of that crest in the middle. And then around the rim of the coin, we've got this really interesting uh, design. It's almost, I don't really know how to quite describe it. It it's, looks a little bit like imperial wreathy like roman kind of wreaths but it's very difficult to sort of see but regardless it looks very very attractive so this is one of those rare occasions where for me anyway and i'll explain why in a moment this side of the coin is actually in my opinion maybe even a little bit better than the other so i don't know that's an interesting thing to think about whether or not you agree with that uh, summation whether this side of the coin is not as attractive as the rear, the rear of the coin. And I'll tell you for why. I think that this is a little bit too busy. It's a little bit too busy of a coin. There's a lot going on in terms of the design. And uh, you can see so much. I mean, one thing's very good. It does look very pretty in that sense. There are some great details to be observed. And the dragon looks very good. If we get really nice and close, you can see all of the details there. But I think with the way that it's been finished with that kind of shinier proof background, you get a lot of uh, texturing from the coin itself when it's in that right light. And it's very difficult to almost make out some of the other details that is on the coin. So, you know, when I hold it up against the black uh, reflection of the camera there, that, in my opinion, looks much, much better. That looks really, really good. And I'd have liked to have seen something more along that line because it makes the detail stand out. But when it's like that, it's actually quite difficult to 
picture and take out, especially with the naked eye, I mean the camera does a better job of it because you guys can sort of see it on a big screen there, but if you're just holding it in your hand, at the certain angles it's very difficult to even tell kind of what part of the coin is what. So that's my only kind of foible I suppose with this particular design. It is quite busy and the shiny kind of background does not really lend itself to getting it, but when you get it in the right light with that kind of black background there, that's very interesting. Like for example these Chinese characters you see up here at the top, they're quite difficult to pick out, like you know it's, it's quite easy to miss them and then you kind of blend into this other background which is that kind of uh, I don't really know what they are, is it? Let's have a quick closer look. It's kind of foliage and almost like mountain tops and branches sticking out like the dragons flying through the wilderness or something. So yeah, that's quite a busy design I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, what do you think? I don't know. It, I mean it's still a very attractive coin, I've seen a lot worse and I've seen one particularly lot, a lot worse coin which I've just dropped on the floor so I can't pick it up but um, <clears throat> here we go. I mean one particularly worse coin is the UK Piggy. There are a lot worse coins out there so don't get me wrong this is not a horrible one but it's certainly, I don't know, just not the best. Anyway, let's do some of the specifics on it. Okay, this is a one ounce silver coin, 999 fine silver, I think we saw that on the other side. Uh, yep, there we go, 999 fine silver, one troy ounce, 2018, 500 francs, so a denominated coin, made by the Scottsdale Mint. Uh, it says on the uh, on one of the dealer's websites that I'm looking at, struck to a proof-like finish. Now it says proof-like finish, so it's not a proof coin, but they are supposedly struck to a proof-like finish. Make of that what you will. Uh, one thing that is good is they are supplied in capsules, and it's a Scottsdale mint piece, and rows of five of them come on those cardboard things. I've cut this out of that cardboard so we can see both sides. I'm not a fan of them being supplied in that cardboard, because unless you get two with one you know, face up and one face down, you can't admire both sides of the coin, which is, I've always thought a little bit funny. Mintage of 25,000, that's a good thing, that's a relatively low mintage, certainly with relation to, uh, you know, some of the big, big mintage coins out there, uh, even bigger mintage coins that have higher premiums. So for a 25,000 mintage coin to have a pretty low premium of, at the moment, only $18, which is um, well, like maybe $2, just about above what a regular Britannia might cost at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is it one that's going to appreciate incredibly well? Well, let's put our rule of three on it. Uh, my rule of three is, does it look pretty? Well, yes and no. It's got some good things going for it, but it's also got a little bit too much going on for it on this side, so I'm not convinced that this is the most aesthetically pleasing coin for me anyway. Uh, second one, does it have a low mintage? 25,000 is low, but it's not super low, so it's not necessarily going to appreciate incredibly from the mintage side of things. And is there going to be a buzz about this? Is there going to be one which really sets this out from other coins? Is there going to be a collector's run on these types of things? Probably not. Maybe there's a... I mean, the, these kind of Eastern themed coins are very popular in the Western world at the moment, and that's one thing to factor in, you know, things like the Dragon and Phoenix, Dragon and Tiger, a um, few other coins that the Perth Mint and, uh, and New Island Mints have been releasing in this last couple of years have done exceptionally well. So that is something in its favour, that could happen. Uh, but whether it's going to be, you know, a huge popular thing, I don't know. It is supposed to be the first in a new series, which is interesting, so we'll see what comes out in the future, whether it will be other types of uh, Imperial dragons, whether it would be dragon themed, you know, the, the whole point of this coin here is it's featuring kind of what is called basically dynastic Chinese imagery, this one particularly from the uh, Ming dynasty, so whether or not they'll have different Chinese dynasties featured on the different coins. This one's featuring, as we know, the imperial dragon and it's holding up these characters. By the way, these characters, the big one here is, is the character Sheng, which supposedly means uh, well, does mean divine or imperial majesty, and then these little characters on the sides, so I read, are supposed to mean to add or to support. So these, the dragon is supporting the imperial majesty, it is holding up the imperial majesty. So uh, yeah, really cool. I quite like it. It's not necessarily going to be the kind of coin that I'd go out and buy hundreds of because there's a lot of money to be made on these in the future, but it's certainly one if you appreciate having loads of different designs of coins in your stack, in your collection, you want to just have a variety of things, then it's something maybe for you. Right, so that is the Imperial Dragon out of the way. Now we have the returning items. We've got the Pyramid of Peas. 
Perth Mint Lunar Pigs. If you want to talk about those, or hear me talk about those, see those, and compare it to the horrible Dead and Dying Pig. This Dead and Dying Pig will have its day, I'm sure, on InFocus Friday at some point, and we'll crucify it for what it should be. It's not a very good coin. We've also then got the big five sovereign gold coin, which is, of course, uh, you know, very, very big and shiny. Nice piece of gold. If you want to see that, then let me know. And we have another very special piece of gold. And not that I'm being biased, but I think you guys are probably going to vote for this one. Although I was wrong last week, I thought you'd all vote for the big five sovereign gold piece. But this one is a one ounce gold panda. And uh, this one is, well, I say one ounce, it's 30 grams. And that's part of the topic that we'll be talking about. This is not actually my coin. I've been custodian of this coin for a couple of weeks. So we don't have it for that long. If you want to see it, now would be the time to vote for it, not that I'm being biased of course, but if the Chinese panda, if the gold Chinese panda does not float your boat, then let me know which other piece you'd like to see next time. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up and share it around on your social media. If you enjoyed looking at the Imperial Dragon from Cameroon, make sure you hit the thumbs up as well. If you'd like to see future episodes of In Focus Friday and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have subscribed and you want to get a notification when these videos go live, then make sure you hit that little alarm bell. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend ahead. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, please make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.